Hi, my name is Andrew Yankuski, and I'm a partner here at Precursor Productions, a leading edge recording studio. Today I'm going to show you a really cool trick in Logic Pro how to basically make a vinyl slowdown effect, which can also sound like a tape slowdown effect, using some really simple tools that are built right into Logic. Now, my studio is called Precursor Productions, and what we do is we do professional audio recording, production, mixing, and mastering. You can find out more about Precursor at precursorproductions.com. We also teach audio production skills. All of the professional skills that we do in the studio are also taught through our intomusic.ca brand. And once again, you can check us out on the web at intomusic.ca. Let's get down to showing you how to do that trick in Logic. Okay, so the first thing we need is a piece of audio to perform this trick on. Uh, in this case, we're going to use uh, a project, obviously, in Logic Pro. And the audio is a finished, mixed, and master track that we did here at our studio by a group called Phantoms, and this song is called Your Time Will Come. What we're going to do to it is we're going to find a part of the song where we want to do a vinyl slowdown and stop effect, or a tape slowdown and stop effect, and we're going to go through the steps of how to perform that operation just using some simple tools that are readily available in Logic. So the first thing we'll do is we'll zoom in and find an appropriate part of the track to work on. So let's kind of do a little bit of zooming. Let's see if we can find a phrase where a tape stop type effect or a vinyl stop effect would sound good. This out is a co-op, not a coercion. Well, this, this area here around bar 36 seems like a good place to do it. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to slice the audio so that we can separate out the part that we want to perform the edit on from the rest of the song. We're going to use a slicing tool in Logic. Uh, those of you who are Logic users may know that if you go to the upper right-hand corner of your range window, you have two places that you can choose tools. There is the left-click tool, which is by default set to your pointer, and then there's a right-click tool, which is called a command-click tool because you use the command key to access it. We're going to start by basically just choosing a slicing tool, which is the scissors. Choose that here, and then we're going to zoom in where we want to make the slice. So here's where we want to make our edit. And then we'll go back to the cursor to tool. A quick way to do that without going to the menu is just simply hit escape twice. So there's a little shortcut for you. So I'm going to separate out and I'm going to resize this audio a little bit so that we can use it later. And so this is the audio we'd like to focus on. I'm going to zoom a little bit deeper into it. The next step is we need to make a fade because as we'll see, fades and slowdowns are using the same basic editing. We'll use our command click tool for that. So we'll go over to the right hand corner, select a tool from the menu, we'll find the fade tool and now we can access that simply by holding down the command key and then clicking and dragging. So let's listen to the section we'd like to make the edit on. Okay, so this section here and now we'll draw a fade. When we draw a fade, it's, we see that it sounds just like an ordinary fade. And that's not very exciting, that's not the effect that we want. But what's important about that is that when we look at the inspector, which is the detailed portion on the left side of your screen, we see a couple of things that are of interest to us. One is it says fade in. We're not doing a fade in here on this region of audio, so there's nothing there. But below that is fade out. Now fade, the word fade doesn't look like it has any menu options, but if you click on it, you'll see there's another option besides fading, and that's called a slowdown. When you choose a slowdown, you'll see that the actual color of the fade will change, and what that indicates is that you actually got a change in the function. So let's now give this a listen and see what we've done. So that's sounding more like the type of effect that we'd want, we want, but it's not perfect yet. What we need to do is we need to fine tune it a little bit. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to change the shape of the fade. By holding down the command key, we can also change our tool into a horizontal area, arrow, and that allows us to bend or reshape the fade. We're going to use what's called an exponential fade, which is a convex fade. This will sound a little bit more like an authentic vinyl or tape stop. Let's give it a listen. Not bad. We might want to exaggerate that a little bit more. So let's give it a slight, slight bit more of exaggeration here. And then we'll perform a second operation on it. So what I want to do now is bounce this audio down. I want to render it in place so that we can now do a second uh, slowdown on it, which will make it sound more authentic. So let's do that. So we go into the context menu, we choose region, bounce regions in place. There's also a hotkey for this. A dialog will come up, we'll just leave all the defaults, and it'll create a new piece of audio on the track below. 
and then it'll mute the original. So now we've got a new piece of audio which has a rendered version of the audio edit that we did. Let's listen to it to make sure. And let's now add our second level of editing. Once again, we're going to hold down Command to bring up our Fade tool. And this time, we're just going to choose the last third of the file. We initially start by creating a fade, but then we go into the inspector, we click on the word Fade next to Fade Out, we choose Slow Down, and that changes the color, which shows us that it's no longer a fade, it's now actually a slow down effect. Let's listen to how that sounds. Well, that sounds a little more authentically like a record stopping or perhaps a tape being stopped, and that's the kind of effect we're looking for. So just to review, what we did here is we used the slowdown effect, which is incorporated kind of sneakily hidden in the fade editor in Logic. And we applied it twice, once to a longer section of audio and then again to the last third of the audio. And what that allowed us to do was to create a more authentic final stopping effect. And once again, if we want to fine tune this a little bit, we can make this into an exponential type of slowdown. So we'll just basically change the shape of it a, of it a bit, and that'll pretty much perfect what we want to do here. Let's give it a listen with the whole phrase. This op is a co op, not a commercial. And now what we could do is we could have the other audio come back in at an appropriate time. So we can slip this over and see if we can get the timing right to make it a little more musical. This op is a co-op, not a commercial. So somewhere around here is where we would like to have the audio start up again. Let's see if we've got that right on the set. This op is a co-op, not a commercial. Moments, momentous from what them moments like. Something along those lines would be the kind of edit that we would want in our song. So hopefully you've enjoyed that trick, and we'll be showing you many more in upcoming video series here. So I hope you've all enjoyed that vinyl slowdown technique that we showed you in Apple Logic Pro. We're going to be having a lot more tips and tricks in our upcoming video series, so please subscribe to our YouTube channel if you want to see more of these types of tips and tricks. Uh, in addition, you can find out more information at our websites. Once again, those are precursorproductions.com for our professional audio production and intomusic.ca for our training. Also. I'm an Apple Logic Certified Trainer with New Media Manitoba, which is an Apple Certified Training Center here in Winnipeg, Manitoba. If you're interested in finding out more about Logic or becoming certified in Logic as a Logic Pro user, you can join our courses at New Media Manitoba, which is simply at newmediamanitoba.com. Also, you can follow us on our social networking sites, which include Facebook and Twitter, where you can follow me at Andrew Yankuski. Thanks again. Look forward to seeing you in upcoming videos.